I'm making a quick video, you know, because soon, sooner or later my channel will be removed from YouTube. I'll slip up somewhere and say something I'm not supposed to say. But this quick video to people in my family and any of my subscribers, what I want to say is we as a people, we suffer other people's agendas. We think these people who are thousands of hundreds of miles away on a TV wearing thousand dollar suits care for us and that they love us. And we we disregard those who are near us wearing the same clothes as us. We disregard what they say and we choose the other people on the TV who do not know us or they don't love us. Now these people are reporting other rich people's agenda okay and that's what we suffer we suffer agenda dictated to us through propaganda now I was trying to tell my sister the truth the absolute truth requires no theory the absolute truth can be demonstrated now there are three steps that I had to take that I had to realize in order to learn the truth Step number one, or number one, is that you have to understand and accept that whatever it is you're going to carry around in your brain and believe is true, you must be able to understand it fully. You have to be able to understand whatever it is you think you believe. Someone can't just say, for instance, that some light in the sky is a trillion uh, 20 trillion miles away and then run with that as the truth you have to be able to understand what you are believing okay so once you understand what it is you're believing and once you can understand the astronomical number of even one trillion miles then you can go on to believe it if you choose but you must be able to understand it number two which is very important Whatever it is that you think you understand, you must be able to verify, i.e. demonstrate it. If you can't verify it personally or demonstrate it, then that is to go in, uh, you cannot accept that as the truth because you're making allowances, you're, you're, you're letting your guard down to have lies, to believe lies, things that aren't true that are being furthered by other people's agenda. So you have to be able to understand whatever it is you think you're going to believe, and you have to be able to verify it and demonstrate it. And number three, which is also these three concepts or rules are all of the same importance. Number three is you have to understand that the truth, the absolute truth requires no theory. If it is the truth, it can be proven, it can be demonstrated and verified, and it requires no theory, okay? Because things that are theories are, are just disclaimers, like I said in another video. They can't be demonstrated. For instance, Einstein, everything he said about time dilation and matter moving at the speed of light and what will happen if, if matter could be propelled at the speed of light is all nonsense because it could never be demonstrated. And this is what I feel is asinine, to, to say that time dilation or time could slow down or do anything if you, could, if you could propel matter at the speed of light. No matter could ever match the speed of light, okay? All right, and Einstein has people believing that time is a thing. Time is not a thing, okay? It's a concept. It's a, it's a four-letter word we made up. It's a way... We, we call yesterday and tomorrow. These are, these are ways that we can recall things that we have done, which is yesterday, and plan for things we want to do, which is tomorrow. But in reality, there is no yesterday or tomorrow because we are in the constant present. Okay? We think time passes because of the appearance and departure of the sun. You know, we call that a day. All right? But if time were a thing, it could never be dictated by what our sun is doing over the earth as a whole. Okay? Time would all be relative unto itself. Like these liars try to say that 
a certain planet goes around the sun in half the time that it takes the earth. Therefore, their year is six months. <clears throat> okay? You can't have time here and then time somewhere else different. Okay, because if time were a thing, and it is not, but if time were a thing, it would be relative unto itself. It would be the same everywhere. Okay, now, like Indians call themselves an age, I'm 40 summers years old, and I would say I'm 50 years old. Okay, D time is a concept. It's not a thing. That's why people can't understand infinity, or there is... Or they believe that there must be a beginning. And in a three-dimensional reality, there must be a beginning. Okay? Because we have the laws of thermodynamics and entropy. Okay? Things break down. Things have to renew. Okay? As soon as we're born, we're not growing. We just... Just because someone gets taller and bigger, they classify that as growing. Which you can. But... Growing is a process of breaking down, okay? Now, they use a ring when a woman gets married as a, as a symbol of eternity because a ring, the circle, has no apparent beginning or end. But we know in reality that it did have a beginning and an end. It was just smoothed and, and grinded down so where you couldn't see it, okay? Now, the main thing here, the, the bottom line I'm saying is the truth is within yourself. Everyone has the truth inside their brain. They just have to unlock it. One moment, please. Yeah, there's some, some of my family here. My mom and my brother, that's the notorious police misconduct individual. Now, I was saying that the truth is within every man and woman on the earth. You just have to unlock it. The, the answers to God, our cosmology, everything is in your head. We are just so distracted and dumbed down that for most it becomes impossible to ever realize it. Now, like it's like the Bible says where Yeshua, Jesus Christ, HaMashiach said that the kingdom of heaven is within you, and it is. But not in the, the same way that some of the apocryphal writers spoke of. Because you must be born again, the way the Lord Yeshua Jesus Christ said. But the truth, within our spirits, in a certain part of our brain, I'm not, I don't go with that pineal gland stuff, because I can't verify that. I'll hear it, but I can't verify it. Verify it, but within our brains is the truth that all reality okay there's people in my family here but as I was saying the truth is Rosa can you get away from there please okay good girl now carry on with yourself I don't like that when kids run around in socks see in the dirt get over there with your dad quick before the hawk comes <coughs> yeah that's right Anyway, the truth is within us, and we have to unlock it, and it's very hard to do so because we are dumbed down and distracted by people with many agendas, and these agendas do not coincide with the well-being in our lives. They do not. People are so dumbed down that they'll believe anything. The truth is within you, and it took me a long time to realize that. I had to take a lot of nonsense in. I would waste time memorizing the arms of the, or the alleged Milky Way galaxy. And, and it was just terrible regurgitating alleged data that made no sense, that got you nowhere. Scientism versus science, there are two branches of science. And once you realize that, you are so much better off. There's real science which can be verified. You can understand it, and you can verify it yourself. Then there's scientism, which, which, which contains one theory after another, all of which cannot be verified. Okay, it's either too big or too far away in what they call outer space. We have been lied to. Our night sky has been 
grossly and blatantly exaggerated. Now, I mean, when I first came across the Flat Earth, I was, you know, I, I wasn't into it. I was very, what is the word? I was very, not concerned, but not aloof, I don't know. I'll, I, uh, when I'm done with the video, it'll all come to me and I'll feel like a fool. The words I should have used. But anyway, when the, the part about the physics and mechanics of water, that really, was, that, that meant a lot to me. That really hit home, okay, because... No amount of water that you pour in an open space where it has an open surface, because water will conform to its container. You can shape water in a balloon, of course, but water in an open, with an open surface, be it a puddle, a bowl, a sink, a tub, a pool, an Olympic-sized pool, a, a pond, the water on the surface can only be level. You understand this? It does not curve. All right, I've tried even using electricity to curve water. Now, recently I did see a video where with, ele with an electrical charge, they did curve three or four millimeters of water. Now, I'll hear it and see it, but I'm not going to believe it until I can do it. But I wouldn't be surprised, you know. But the nature, physics, and mechanics of water and mass, I call it water and mass or large bodies of water, will always seek and maintain their level. Therefore, I know for a fact, of which I, can, I feel I can verify, that the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans are blatantly misdescribed on every model globe in the world. And that is not our reality. And people think you're effing crazy when you say that. But if someone gives me a few minutes of their time, I can show them that there's no way that you can curve water in the manner that is suggested to you when you look at a model globe. Water does not do that. It cannot do that. It cannot maintain a curve for 25,000 miles in circumference. That is ridiculous. That right there proves that we do not live on a globe. Every body of water. Like if you go on Google Earth and you do two points, point A to point B, say 500 miles, and you do the cross-section, the elevation, <coughs> you will see that there's no curvature. Okay, they'll show you a big-ass giant ball, Google Earth, and then you going down towards the Earth, and you can do point A to point B. The cross-section, elevation of, a, the, of the land that you're, you're dealing with, has no curvature. And then you got these knuckleheads who are saying, oh, well, all the dirt of the Earth is on top of the curve of the Earth. And just look at the globe. The, the surface has to correspond with what's underneath it to get that type of curvature 25,000 miles in circumference. <laughs> so the topography of the surface of the Earth would have to match what they have told us originally, which they're backtracking on now, is the Pythagorean calculation of 8 inches per mile squared. And that should be... And that is... Not, that is from use at a stationary point. You're not moving up a mile with every mile. You're staying in place and you're looking out one, two, three, four miles. Every second, third, fourth mile, eight inches has to be doubled. You know, well, uh, the first mile is eight inches, then the second mile is 16, eight times two is 16, then the third mile, eight times three is 24 inches, <coughs> and so on and so forth. That's how much drop we're dealing with to have the globe they tell us we live on, which is twenty, almost 25,000 miles in circumference. And we don't get that. Okay, they, they distort perspective and refraction. Yes, there's refraction. That, that could be verified. But there's a channel called Jay Tolan where he zooms in on... He can see for 300, three, 400 miles using infrared, a lens he puts over his high zoom, and, and it cuts through the haze and the pollution that, 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 that where everything converges in the, the horizon for a vanishing point, which is what we see with our own two eyes. But with high zoom and infrared, you can go through it, and you can see stuff that we should not be able to see. 
and it's not refraction beaming it back up to the horizon the way it should be and it's just not true I know when I make these videos I, I jump around all over the place but the main point of this video was we are lied to by people who have an agenda and they make up all types of excuses to explain away why we don't see what they say reality is okay they teach us all manner of bullshit and when I did believe in the globe there was lots of stuff I didn't know a flat earther could have destroyed me and that would have hurt my feelings because I thought I knew I, reg I memorized so much material about my reality where I would regurgitate it with people from college and this and that and it would make my day to speak on something they, they didn't know about. Okay? And even a mediocre flat earther could have destroyed me. He could have said, okay, so we got all this oxygen and gas on the earth and we're taught we live in a vacuum. The outer space is an infinite and expanding vacuum. And all the material I memorized back then I never took that into consideration that I never really thought about that that outer space was considered to be a vacuum and he would have started mentioning things I didn't really realize and I wouldn't have had an answer for him you know I never even really thought about the physics and mechanics of a vacuum and what happens when there's no air you know like if you stick a fly in a vacuum it cannot fly I'll never forget my first experiment I seen. They, they put a fan in a vacuum with a feather attached to it, and they put the fan on, and the, the feather didn't budge. I was astounded by this simple reality. Uh, 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 even a, And now it, uh, it appears to me that even a simpleton should know that or be able to realize that instantaneously. You know, and then they tell us, these rockets got to go with the, the curve of the earth in the air to get out of space. They call it to get out of our atmosphere into space, which they call escape velocity, and to explain away why rockets don't go straight up. Why they don't go straight up. You see, we were taught in school that the quickest way to go somewhere in between two points was a straight line. But... Now NASA and SpaceX disregard that and then they make up a, a term or a word or two words, escape velocity, and why would a rocket have to follow the curvature of the earth in the air? Because the earth's spinning and the rocket just goes straight up and then it looks like it's turning? It's going, no, that's ridiculous, that's stupid. Airplanes do not fly that way to get to their destination. <coughs> they go up. They, they, they go at an angle, and when they reach the desired alti cruising altitude, they level off and fly straight level. I don't care if it's New York to France. They fly all the way there level until it's time to descend and land. Okay? We are taught lies. And I could sit here all day, and someone in my family, I doubt they'd even get this far in a video. But you got to research it yourself. you got to want to know the truth. For the three, the, the three aspects that I said to learn the truth. You first of all, the most important thing is you got to really want to know the truth. You know, a lot of people in my family like to go with the flow, path of re least resistance. They live in their own little bubble, their own little world, and they don't know that thousands of people are protesting against these shutdowns. Up oh, there we go. I might I might get my channel done for that. People, people are protesting left and right over a lot of things, but they don't tell us. There's a lot of things going on that they don't let us know. But if you go on the Internet and you ask and you type in the right thing, there's someone there has provided it where you can see. You know, you can't believe everything you see on TV or on the Internet, but you can put things together to know the truth. Okay, and I can't, what I can't believe is it's a crystal clear day in New York State right now. You rarely see a blue sky in New York State. Rarely. You know, and I dare anyone in New York State at night to provide any type of evidence of a black night sky. 
the last two years I've never seen a black night sky with stars. Never. Last night there was some visibil vis visibility, but it was it's always being tampered with by chemtrail influence. Okay, that's all. Bye-bye.